I just wanted to go over my entry for the 555 contest. I've been breadboarding it, uh, prototyping away, and it's a kind of sequencer thing, uh, but also with the oscillators built in, so it's kind of a uh, synthesizer sequencer. And I've also uh, started transferring the uh, design on the paper. Later I'll use that to stick it on the computer so I can print out a PCB. And I've also started uh, kind of doing a layout of the, the face, like the panel. So you've got like they're gonna, the paper cutouts at the top here, these are where the LEDs are going to be for the, the eight steps. And the power switch, jack output. I've also managed to dig out a little analog meter from an old project. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's the face. And there's also some wood as well. I've got some nice uh, walnut wood. The aluminium face came with the, the container. So I purchased this today, and that's gonna be the project box. And that came with the aluminium face, but I really wanna use the, the wood. But what I'll probably do is put it on top of the aluminium so it gets uh, extra support so that the wood doesn't crack or splinter. I've also been um, experimenting a bit with uh, making a kind of opaque, semi-opaque button for the LEDs. Because I've got these, uh, I had loads of these uh, tiny little high-powered LEDs uh, lying around. So I just used them from the parts bin. And what I've done is basically just taken a bit of plastic, uh, which is just uh, the lid off of a tube of crisps. And if you stick that down on the wood, that gives you a nice flat surface and you can fill that with hot glue. And then I've just put the LED in the top, let it kind of dry a little bit first and then prod it in there. And it gives you uh, quite a nice smooth surface. And I just pop, I've got a coin cell battery there, so I'm just test it out. So that's what the lights are going to look like. And we'll just take a look at the circuit here. So we've got a nice big chunky power switch. And at the minute we've got the 555 timer. Um, is a kind of clock and it's driving a shift register. Um, I, I kind of had this idea about using a shift register to make a sequencer so I thought about um, kind of plugging it back into itself so it's kind of like in a loop and I use the timer to drive the both the latch and the clock and you can kind of just kind of add like zeros and ones to the stream so you can have more than so it kind of be able to play more than one note at a time as well and then you've got the pitch for the oscillators and you can also kind of change the note length as well and the tempo so you can make the note length really small and then maybe turn the tempo down. And there's also kind of like a, a faux portamento kind of function as well. If I grind, ground this contact here. Oh plugged in the right one. Oh, no, that's not plugged in. Hang on, I'll ground it over here. There we go.
So that's it so far. Right, this is the finished synth sequencer type thing uh, that I've been making for the 555 contest. It's, uh, I'm calling it the Milgram 555, uh, named after Stanley Milgram. My friend was around the other night and he remarked that it reminded him a bit of the kind of equipment he would use in one of his experiments with all the knobs and dials and flashing lights and stuff. It's, um, it's got a built-in buzzer. Uh, I'll just turn the volume up. And I'll input a pulse. Unfortunately, it's not too loud. So if I was going to do the project again, I'd probably put an amplifier in for the buzzer. That was just kind of so we had like a test buzzer for when it's not plugged in. But let's plug it in and hear what it sounds like. So the whole thing's just powered by a 9 volt battery inside. And you've got the top switches here are octaves. And then you've got independent pitch control for each oscillator. And you've also got these switches here at the bottom. Just turn it down a bit. So the switches at the bottom here, uh, they kind of uh, change the sound of the oscillator a bit. But it also kind of messes with the sequence as well. It's kind of strange, but it kind of keeps its tempo and its rhythm. And then at the bottom here, okay, so you've got the, uh, the green light is, uh, is when the oscillator is on the main oscillator that sets the tempo, and the red's when it's off, so you can kind of change the note length a bit. So you can have tiny notes. like that. And if you turn this dial down the notes get longer and longer. And then you can also change the tempo of this one. And then the white uh, button is a mute. Nice and crunchy.
And you can also add more than one pulse to the stream. You can have as many as you like, so you can kind of have polyphony as well. Um, in the red button uh, removes pulses from the stream, so you kind of got to put them in in real time. <laughs> 